Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to look at how you can export a displacement map from ZBrush and use this in Arnold for Maya. We're using uh, Maya 2018 here, but this should also work for older versions of Arnold and Maya. So this is probably some of, one of the most seen text tutorials we've ever done. Like, yeah. mo like if you search for ZBrush and d displacement map on Google, this is probably what you, you're going to find. Yeah, you're going to find a, one for uh, V-Ray and for Moto. Mm -hmm. So it's time to do one for Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> so this here is the final render, which is what we're going to get in the end here. Uh, let's look at, first we do this, before, let's look at the, the UVs in uh, Maya. So here we have the UVs for this guy. So this is laid out over multiple UDIMs here. So this is, we know this is not the ideal way of putting it, like, you know, the head is here and then the, the, the teeth are all the way over here. Uh, the reason here is simply because there was, there was the rest of a body here and we just cut the head off. But this is just showing you how you can do this with UDIMs as well. Yeah, I mean, there's not really a, a big difference. There's just some small settings in terms of naming and yeah, exactly. enabling a few settings here and there. So, so it's a fairly simple way to. Like, there is not a yeah, like Morton said, there is no difference between actually using UDIMs or single tiles here. So before we really get into this one, in ZBrush, let's look at what a, the, our displacement maps can look like. The final map. So this is uh, what we're going to get out. This is a grayscale map where we have we have a concept of, of a mid value. A mid value is this point here, which is perfectly gray. There is, if this is 0 0.5, nothing will happen. If this is white, it's going to go out. And if it's black, it's going to go into the model. This is essentially just telling the render engine, should you displace these points in or out? So that's, that's the main concept of a displacement map. You could totally paint a displacement map in something like Photoshop. You don't have to do this in, um, in ZBrush or anything like that. This is just uh, what we're getting from ZBrush here is just a map created from the model. The nice thing about having your midpoint be gray or 50% gray is that it's easier to tweak in yes. 2D afterwards. Yes. So you could also have a midpoint of zero. Yeah. And if you're working with 32-bit displacement map, that allows you to go to you know below zero. Yeah. So, but for these purposes, we're using a midpoint of 0 0.5. Yeah. If it's set just to, to zero, it's just going to look it pretty much complete the black with some highlights here. Yeah. But now you can actually see what's going on. You can see with the faces and the eyes and all that. So with this said, let's go into ZBrush. We're using ZBrush 4R8 P2 in this one. And and this is our model here, which let's just change the matcap here to something a bit nicer. <laughs> the red one is kind of nasty. Yeah, so. it's not good. So this is here is a model with a couple of subdivision levels. And it has sculpting on, on it here. So it has a lot of nice little details here. And essentially, you want to get all this stuff here into um, into Arnold. And the reason we use a displace map is simply because this here is too heavy. <laughs> Like you can't deform this at all. This is like 2 million polys. If you were to deform this in a rig, there is no way to do that. Well, if you are using a low res mesh and a displacement map, you can deform this to your heart's content without any problems. So let's look at the display displacement settings here. Uh, like I said, this, this model also has UVs as well, right, straight from it, which is important. You do need UVs for this here to work. <laughs> yes. It's pretty important. So if you go under C plugin, and here we have a, a tool called Multimap Exporter. This is where all our displacement is going to be, be done. Under Multimap Exporter, we, we have the initial setting here and just enable displacement. This means that once you create your maps, you're only going to export out displacement. You can also export out your mesh as well, which is quite handy, which will export out your mesh from the lowest level. Or from, sorry, from whatever level you specify, which is by default the lowest level. Here is create all maps. This is what you click to generate all the maps in the end. Subtools means that if this is enabled, if you have multiple subtools like we do here with um, the teeth, these are going to, you're going to create maps for all of these. This is extremely useful if you have like 30 subtools. Yeah, it kind of sucks to have to go through every single one because you have yeah. to wait for the map generation to finish for every single subtool. Yeah. And you know, maybe you just want to leave your computer overnight to yeah. do that kind of thing. And then if you have merge maps, this is if, if different objects are sharing the same UV tile, which simply means, let's say the teeth here was in the same UV tile as 
the head, these will now be merged on creation. If these are, if merge map is disabled, you'll get two separate maps. You'll get like 1001 underscore one and 1001 underscore two. This is really useful as you now have to merge these together in something like Nuke or something mm. like that, which is quite annoying to do. So generally we enable merge maps for this. If you know that you have, you have, um, uh, you have objects which are sharing the same UI tile. Are there any restrictions? Uh, is there like a restriction with merge maps in yes. terms of... Uh... Never thought you would ask. <laughs> <laughs> so if you enable merge maps, you cannot enable EXR files for some bizarre reason. Yeah, so then it gets it out as a TIFF file. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So if you do use merge maps, you have to output this as a, t a TIFF file. I prefer to use EXR files. Uh, so we're going to switch. We're going to be switching to e EXR for now, but then merge maps will not work. So moving on, the map size here, we're going to be just using 2K here. Uh, obviously, the higher resolution, the more detail you get into your map. And the longer it's going to take to generate. Absolutely. The map border here is, um, is how many pixels outside the border is this going to fill in? This is quite useful as uh, you can now blur your map in something like Nuke or Mari afterwards without getting displacement seams at, le at least as strong as you would if this is set to 1. I believe mm. this is set to 4 by default. Just set this all the way up. Then we have flip maps vertically or flip V. This you have to enable this. This is because uh, ZBrush views the model upside down and the <laughs> UV is upside down. So, um, so unless your UVs are purposefully flipped before coming into ZBrush, <laughs> yes. then this is a must-have setting. Absolutely. So definitely enable enable this one. Absolute must. Uh, then we have um, a bunch of export options here. So the first one we have to enable is file names. The only thing we have to change here is UV tile ID format, which is just a fancy way of saying, are you using UDIMS or are you using like a different way of describing your the coordinates for your maps? And one thing you can do here, you say that you can see that the displacement map is set to dash DM. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a bunch of maps that you want to get out. Um, and when you when you first export that, it's going to come out with a, with a weird name. Mm -hmm. But if you add a dot in the DM one as well, it'll automatically put the dot right before the number. So you don't have to do any crazy renaming. So that can be pretty useful. But we'll yeah. just leave it for st standard yeah. for now. So just hit OK. Remember to change this to UDIM if you are using UDIMs, which we highly recommend that you do. Yeah. Switch morph target doesn't actually do anything. This is currently broken. Um, yeah. So um, we've done extensive tests on this. This does nothing. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of people claiming that it works. It, it doesn't. Yeah, we've done. Yeah, we've done the tests. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then what we're interested in here is from what subdivision level should it generate the map from? What what this is currently doing now? Now it's going to look at the difference between this level and this level, mm -hmm. and all and all the information we're seeing in here. This is simply the difference between these two. There are cases where you might want to export from, let's say, subdivision level two. Absolutely. So let's say maybe the subdivision level two is that's the one that's the the mesh that you have uh, published. Yeah. Uh, that's the mesh you're working with. Yeah. But so most of the time, it's probably the lowest level. So let's say this is the lowest level in ZBrush, but this is actually level you're working with in your rig or in your scene or whatnot. Mm. Then you want to set this to level two. In this case, we set this here to one. Yeah. Then we have adaptive. Essentially, don't enable this one. Adaptive uh, adds a lot of computing time yeah. to your maps, and the quality difference is so negligible. Yeah. This will simply adaptively subdivide your model where if there are super stretchy areas. Yeah. But it takes crazy long here. Yeah, we've had like we've we've had where we had to export an entire character, a hundred UDIMs. You could do that in an hour or so. Yeah. You turn on adaptive, it takes 24. Yeah, it's so. crazy. And there is no real difference in it. Mm. This one as well, this is the biggest problem I have <laughs> with displays map. This is the reason why your maps have been taking a long time. Because if you see to look to the right here now, if you hover over it, it says higher values is better quality but slow generation. Technically, I mean, this it's is definitely uh, slow generation. Definitely slow generation. And guess technically higher quality. Essentially, this is a subdivision slider. So if you set this to zero, nothing is going to happen. If you set this to one, it's going to subdivide your model once, which means if we had two million now, now it's going to become to eight million. If you set this to, to two, you know, it's going to subdivide that once more. Set <laughs> yeah. this to four, you're going to get all the polys in the known universe <laughs> in here. It's just an unnecessary waste of time. It's completely unnecessary. This is something that, let's say you were to have faceting in your model and uh, you can't have enough, like if you're looking in this close here now and you see you have faceting, you could maybe add this to one or something, but I've never found a use case for this. 
And then we have smooth UVs. This, if, if your UVs are smooth in Maya by default, uh, you should enable smooth UVs here. If you are not smoothing your UVs, just leave this off. Yeah, so most of the time by default, you will be working with smooth UVs. Yeah. So. Uh, mid value, this is what we talked about beforehand. This is usually set to zero or one. From a pipeline point of view, it's a bit easier to set it to one because most software are, are made for that. At least a few render engines yeah. are made for that. But personally, I prefer to keep this at 0.5 because this is what we're getting now. Now this will look, we can actually see what's going on here. And if you want to like, if you want to uh, add this on top of your texture map to get more details, it's just a bit easier. So I'm not actually sure if it's completely true with ZBrush Right. It, it says um, that you will get better results by setting it to zero with 32-bit, but that shouldn't really make any difference seeing no. as it's a floating point. So 0.5 yeah. should give you the same because then you can still just go down to zero. Yeah, exactly. So the difference here between like, uh, the reason we want 32-bit on, which we do want on mm, here, definitely. is because now we, we get data we just get a lot more data here, essentially. If this is enabled, you will have a really hard time getting good maps. So always, always, always enable 32-bit. And EXR, for the most part. Yeah. This, like I said, Morton, like Morton was hinting at beforehand, merge map does not work with EXR. <laughs> so if we this is enabled, uh, disable this. I, I prefer to lay out my UVs anyway so that no objects are overlapping in the same one. So for instance, the teeth here will always be in a different tile compared to this. Uh, I, I very rarely have them overlap anyway, so this is not a problem. But if yeah. you haven't planned for this mm -hmm. and you have like um, and, and you have like claws in the same one as your head, <laughs> which you know might be fine. Just be in, just be where you need merge maps on. Yeah. Then we have three channels. Three channels essentially means that you get a gray map. We actually cheat a little bit here. Uh, if we undo this, this is actually what the maps looks like. Uh, which means it's only in the red channel. This keeps the map a bit lighter, and there's not really a whole lot of point in that. So we can now see if this is on, um, this, this is what we have here. We only have this in a red channel here. So this is perfectly fine. There is no reason to have anything in the other channels. Now, all it does, it duplicates the same channel to the other channels. Yeah. Uh, there's no point. So, so Arnold or whatever render engine you're using will read this perfectly fine. I think fine. there was something about some render engines back in the day that needed it oh, yeah. populated for like there was Probably. something with V-Ray in the beginning I think oh. but you know not anymore no not anymore at least so just set this here to uh, three channel well, and not three channel not three channel <laughs> sorry disable this yeah. <laughs> set it to not three channel and uh, all these settings here don't worry about them don't just leave this be so if you are um, interested in using displacement a lot just screenshot this <laughs> Just and just save it in a safe place, so it doesn't get lost. <laughs> and no one can ever hurt it. <laughs> yes, because these settings here are going to work most of the time, perfectly fine for you. Mm -hmm. And then we hit create all maps, and um, I'm just going to put this here. And that is going to only take a few seconds. It depends on uh, the complexity of your mesh and Absolutely. like how many sub tools you have, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I don't trust the timer on this. This seems to be very <laughs> variable. This probably took around 10 seconds, but I've seen this just be completely whack. Yeah. So uh, I think another important thing to notice, especially when you're generating maps on Windows, not uh, OS X, is uh, you don't want to disturb the window at no. map generation. Let's no. say you have a Windows update screen popping up, for example, mm -hmm. or uh, maybe you're using a not so legal copy of Windows or something. Any, any pop-up that interferes with ZBrush will automatically give ZBrush lower CPU priority, yeah. which will make the map generation take longer. Yeah. So um, don't disturb, disturb the ZBrush when yeah, the ZBrush yeah, yeah. is working, doing exactly. its work. <laughs> just, le just leave it be. Yeah, just, shh, shh, it's like it's a fine. bear. <laughs> yeah. So this is, these are the maps now. So you can see here now that we have, they're called displacement, uh, essentially the name of the object we had, and then just a bunch of stuff here. So I, I don't like this. Uh, if, you, if you watched our Udin video, you can tell that th this is not a sequence. I, I prefer to have this all as one sequence. So I just prefer to rename this as disp dot the name see this is where you can if you wait with renaming the last one there if you in your naming right you see it says dash dm mm -hmm. if you add the dash dm and a dot at the end of dm if you have a bulk renamer you could find everything mm. before the dot and yeah. rename that R right now we only have three maps so it doesn't yeah. matter but that's just a little extra tip i suppose this gets absolutely infuriating like more said, <laughs> if you do have multiple maps and you don't have that yeah because like right now, three maps, totally fine. Mm -hmm. But we might have a hundred. Yeah, and then it sucks. That's not a particularly huge deal if you have only one object. But if you have, 
if you have a like a character made of like forty different rocks and every single rock is diff named differently, mm. this becomes very non-trivial. So the reason we're adding this, uh, we were making this as one sequence here, is just now we just need one file note in Maya for this, which is quite useful. Yeah, before you had to do all kinds of weird stuff with blending things together <laughs> yeah, and exactly. But now Maya is actually it actually supports UDEMs. Yeah, it does. So then you can you could also export out your map just by enabling export map here. But or I prefer uh, export ex export mesh. Yeah. So but I prefer to do this just by hand because that that way I control it. So um, very first thing I do when exporting out this is disable group. This is terrible. This will disable the subgroups, which in theory is good, because if you have something like this where you have different polygroups in certain places, it should preserve that. In reality, though, it doesn't. In reality, it just splits up your model like crazy Yeah, in so Maya. this is, this is a, only an issue in Maya. Yes. But there is a fix now for it there with is. the OBJ importer. There like, is. if you import an OBJ and set it to single mesh, yes. I think the option is, you then can get around that. So let's just export out these guys here. And uh, it's here, and we just call this head. And then we do the same thing for the other ones here. And here you can see, like, this has multiple subgroup, uh, uh, this has multiple polygroups here. So you could disable uh, merge, or you could just hit Control W to create a single polygroup. Mm. So, oh, wrong. Very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so go in here and call this teeth. And then we do it for the last one as well, just call eyes. Make sure no polygroup, Control W, and just call it eyes. So now let's jump into Maya. So in Maya here, we've already set this up. Uh, so this is this is already this is this is using the flip normal lighting scene, which um, there is a free version as well online for this. It's just a super nice way to um, uh, to just start your your lighting as we already have all the lights set up and all that. So we are using uh, the render 07 called uh, Shadow Moon. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow Moon. Yeah, we had to find some names for it because before it was just called Render 10, yeah. Render we 11. Shadow Moon was cool. Yeah, pretty cool. So um, we've essentially just um, put it put it in here, put it on the character group. This works with you know you don't have to use this setup here. This you can just put this into an empty Maya scene and just render here. This is just already pre made or pre set up for you. And then we take the entire thing here, the entire group, and we're just gonna assign. Actually, let's only do for the head and the teeth because these are the only ones with uh, a map. So we assign, I've set this to favorite material. This is the AI standard surface. You can also just go to new material and go to Arnold and AI standard surface for this. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty strict when it comes to naming my materials. I'm going to call this uh, uh, body teeth underscore shader. This is just so you can identify all your shaders early on. I'm also just going to set um, the roughness a bit up, because right now you can see here it's a bit sharp. I want this to be a bit broader, so something like this. So the way we set up our displacement for this now is by going under, click on this guy here. And now we under the shading group, we have, uh, we have a slaughter called the displacement material. What you want to do here is you want to plug in a file node. Well, you just click it, select a completely regular file node, and under the displacement amount, you just click on the little, little guy here, and here you select your maps. So uh, this was the new maps here, and now we can we just select one of these. So this is a, this is as a sequence here, but you can only you only have to select one, which is incredibly handy. Like if you have a thousand maps here, <laughs> you still only select one here. Disable filtering because this is just just going to smooth it smooth it a little, and then we set the UV tiling mode to UDEM. This is the secret to dealing with. Udems in Maya. This little guy here. You can now see that this now has replaced this with uh, with Udem, the Udem tag here. So now whatever coordinate was here, which is like 1001, 1002, etc., is going to read perfectly fine. So this is now going to read all the Udems without any issue whatsoever. And then the second thing we have to do is we now currently plugged in a displacement map, but we haven't really told the mesh what to do. If we were to render this right now, you would just it would just still be an incredibly low res result, which would just be displaced. So nothing would really happen. What we have to do is we have to go to the shape node of this and under Arnold. So shape node, that's the second one here. You have the transform node and the shape node. And then we go to Arnold. And then we go to all the way down here. We have subdivision. Under type, we now have to set this to Catmull Clark or to Cat Clark. And now we set the subdivision here is how many times do you want this to be smooth? 
set to one, it's going to smooth once. I set this to something like three. That's going to give us enough for a solution for this. Ideally, you want to have this as many times as it's been subdivided in, in a ZBrush, but uh, we're going to use a feature here called Auto Bump, which means we don't have to. The Auto Bump feature is essentially going to put the, the stuff it, it can't displace into the bump map, so you get an incredibly crisp result. That's super cool. That's such it, a cool feature. Yeah, it's really <laughs> nice. So set this, set this to how many times you want to displace it this to, uh, or how many times you want to smooth it. Set this to Catmull Clark. So just to auto bump, and then we have to enable one more thing here. Uh, so we remember how we set the mid value to 0.5. This means that we have to change the mid value here to 0.5 as well. This is the bounds padding. So if you're just exporting out your map uh, at zero, then it'll be fine. Then you'll be fine. So here, we instead of setting to 0.5, we've got to set it to minus 0.5. <laughs> and we've got to do this for all the object which has, which has um, uh, I display some map to it. So 0 0.5, enable auto bump, set this here to Catmull Clark, and then we set this here uh, to two or three, and then we are ready to render. So this is what it currently looks like. This is with the displacement map set up with, um, in, into the shader with uh, the AI standard material for it. Super nice. Now Super you have nice. have a displaced mesh. Yeah. So, um, if you have any issues with this, because there are always some issues with <laughs> displacement maps here, make sure that the, ma the mesh here is the same as your export from uh, Maya. Make sure that, that your UV map is super clean, that there is no overlapping or distortion or anything like, like that. Just make sure this here is super nice. Uh, make sure that your iteration is set to three. And um, make, sure, make sure that there aren't any issues in ZBrush when it comes to bad geometry. I find that most times you have, mm. uh, you have issues with displacement map. That's simply just caused by bad geometry in ZBrush. Like maybe you did a projection thing. You projected from high res to a low res. And um, you now have tons of nasty issues in this just due to pr projection errors. So that's probably the biggest issue uh, I've seen with displacement maps. But this is really it. It's fairly straightforward. If you if you if you check this video here and you, and you feel a bit intimidated by all the steps, just do it a few times. This here becomes fairly simple to do. Yeah, I guess the trickiest things has always been the ZBrush settings. Yeah. But over the years, we've kind of found the solution that yeah. works 100% of the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. So just go back to those little screen, the little screenshot you kept safe forever, <laughs> and just keep using that. So if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And um, thank you for watching. Thank you, guys.